amazing grace will always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberty. To a midweek episode of Unshackled. Tonight's episode will be the Sophie story. No, that's not a misspelling or a word left out. It's the Sophie story. And we'll bring it to you in just a little while. But I invite you to call some friends, family members, call her across the head, send a carrier pigeon, email, however you reach out. Tell men and women, boys and girls, down the street, around the corner, across this great nation, and around the world, that Unshackled is now airing on the George Espen Lobb Show. Swing, 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 swing,
Well, Ezekiel went down in the middle of the street. He saw an angel working on a chariot wheel. He wasn't too particular about that chariot wheel. He just wanted to see how the chariot be. Why don't you swing? Swing down, chariot, stop and let me ride. Swing, swing down, chariot, stop and let me ride. Rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord. Come, come in easy. I got a home on the other side. Swing, 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 I got a home on the other side. Swing now, chariot, stop and let me ride. Swing now, chariot, stop and let me ride. Rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord. Come in easy. I got a home on the other Tell you about the coming of the judgment. Fare thee well, fare thee well. I'm going to tell you about the coming of the judgment. Fare thee well, fare thee well. There's a better day a coming. Fare thee well, fare thee well. There's a better day a coming. Fare thee well, fare thee well. In that grave, a getting up morning. Fare thee well, fare thee well. In that grave, a getting up morning. Fare thee well. 
Fare thee well when you see the lightning a flashing. Fare thee well. Fare thee well when you hear the thunder crashing. Fare thee well. Fare thee well when you see the stars a falling. Fare thee well. Fare thee well when you hear the chariots calling. Fare thee well. Fare thee well in that great a getting up morning. Fare thee well. Fare thee well in that great a getting up morning. Fare thee well. Fare thee well when you see the lightning flashing, when you hear the thunder crashing, when you see the stars are falling, when you hear the chariots calling. Good news, chariots are coming. Good news, chariots are coming. So glad, so glad, chariots are coming, and I don't wanna be left out. There's a long white robe in the heavens, I know. Long white robe in the heavens, I know. Long white robe in the heavens, I know. I said good news. Good news, chariots are coming. Good news, chariots are coming. So glad, so glad, chariots are coming, and I don't want to be left out. In that great, a getting up morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. In that great, a getting up morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. Great again the morning, fairly well, fairly well in that great again the morning, fairly well, fairly well. Come, Jesus.
up cause he's always on the main line and tell your friends they can call him at the same time and get connected cause there ain't no wait in line rain or shine he gon' be there right on time for God first keep the devil like way behind listen close while I tell you about a friend of mine who died for me to forgive every sin of mine cut me out every time when I'm in a bind supply my needs even when I ain't got a dime hope me up and yes I'm cold in my right mind drunk in the spirit cause I'm sipping no communion wine this kind of love I have you flowing on cloud nine I give a praise every time and every line I rhyme open my eyes to the truth back when I was blind the son of God took on the sin of all men kind of rap about I have you wishing you had been kind of spent time in the presence of the true divine the most high will give your life a brand new design but would I be without a love so genuine speaking his name saying chills up and down my spine if you feeling like your best is on the decline just call on Christ and your life will be truly fine guaranteed to be there through the end of time just call him anytime if you're In just a few seconds, we'll take you into the feature story tonight, entitled The Sophie Story. But first, if you're somewhere between Chicago and here, where we're at, the mid-Atlantic states on the eastern shore, I trust that you have your eye on the sky, because we are getting word that There's going to be torrential rains, straight-line winds that could go as high as 88 miles an hour. So keep your eye. Keep your eye looking up tonight. And when you see those dark clouds are coming, find a very safe place. Because I'm told that this storm is huge. 
And I think I read not too long ago, it's going to affect many millions of people. I believe it's in 19 states. So if you have already went through it, I hope you come out on the other end fine. If you're going through it right now, I trust it'll soon be over. And for us here in the mid-Atlantic states and on the eastern shore, we are waiting and watching and anticipating. Grandma Strayer used to always say, it's better safe than sorry. So everyone, everywhere, breathe the prayer that everyone, everywhere, that will be affected by this storm will be safe. We're going to take you into our feature. Sophie. How do you How do? do? You do? Fear is the quicksand of life, offering nothing to hold on to, dragging down even the hope of change. Deathly fear. The woman in this story battled the dread of death for years because of events in her childhood. She had to become as a little child again before her heart and mind and life, including her fears, were unshackled. This is Unshackled, the longest-running radio drama in history, produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. Our country was barely a hundred years old when George and Sarah Clark first opened their little storefront mission in Chicago's Skid Row in 1877. That mission grew to become Pacific Garden Mission, where today hundreds of men, women, and children find refuge and hope. Thanks to caring friends who send financial gifts, the old lighthouse offers food, fresh clothing, and a safe place to sleep, all without charge to the homeless. Mission medical and dental personnel relieve their aches and pains in the mission clinic. Pastors and counselors share the good news of God's love and forgiveness. He offers what no one else can, peace and hope for the future. And that message of redemption goes out to the world through this program. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is program number 3005 in the series Unshackled the program that makes you face yourself and think. I'm hungry. What's your supper? Meatloaf, but it was probably done an hour ago. Dried out by now. I'll eat it anyway. Where were you? I had the chance to work overtime and we need the money, so I did. Where are the kids? Sophie's playing in her room, but Jenny's been sick all day. Oh, what's wrong with her? I don't know. She's had a fever. I better go check on her. I can get the doctor if you think we need to. Oh, no! She's not moving! Dean, she's not breathing! She's dead! My little girl is dead! The woman in our story was seven years old when death struck her family, taking her four-year-old sister. They lived in a coal mining town of Pennsylvania, but from then on, she lived in fear. This is the story of how that affected her life. It's the true testimony of a woman called Sophie from the classic files of Unshackled. I remember asking Mama why my sister died, and she said something about God. So then I knew. If God took away little sisters, he must be very cruel because Mama cried a lot. And he might come and get me, too. I prayed asking him not to take me away. A year later, when I was eight, my mother died also, and I knew that God had taken her. So then I was sure he hated me. The neighbors came to help before the funeral. The children are cleaned and dressed, Dean, ready to go. Thank you for coming over to help. Oh, my privilege. Their mother was a fine woman. I never knew a finer one. Sophie, are you remembering to pray for God to help you? I wish I knew why God had to take her away from us. I thought at the time, if Mama was a fine woman, then there wasn't any hope at all for me if I died. My tears at the funeral were as much for me as for the loss of my mother. 
Not long after that, death struck again, this time taking my brother. That proved to me without a doubt that God was capricious and cruel, someone to be placated. So in my early teens, I spent hours in church. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Oh God, I tried to be good today. Please forgive me if I said or did anything to upset you. Help me, God, to know your will. No matter how long or diligently I prayed, I never had peace of mind. It would be many years before I'd realize that religion couldn't give me peace. I was 14 when I met Nick. In the church again? Yes. I go every day after school to pray. Oh, you must have a stack of brownie points with God. Don't be disrespectful, Nick. Sure. Uh, what else do you do, Sophie? I'll go to class. Go home. Do you date? Not yet. Well, why not? I'm not sure that God wants me to. Of course he does. Didn't he create marriage in the family? Well, I guess you're right. Well, how about going to a movie with me sometime? Nick's gentle nature was good for me, and we dated for four years while I finished high school. But all during that time, I was afraid of doing something to make God angry with me. And every step I took generated fear, apprehension of making a wrong move. Sophie, let's get married. I love you, Nick, but I can never marry you. Why not? It's hard to explain. You wouldn't understand. Try me. If I married you, God wouldn't like it. I'd probably die. Sophie, that's crazy. I knew you wouldn't understand. Well, why would you die? Your family's a different nationality from mine. You even have a different church. God would never forgive me for marrying you. Now I've heard everything. Maybe if you come over to my church... Uh, who's going to be the man in the family anyway? It's the only way, Nick. <laughs> With Nick, it was a matter of pride. With me, it was fear. And because my fear was greater than his pride, he gave in and joined my church. We married, and for a while, being a new bride with a new home eased my fears. I almost forgot about death. Then I got pregnant and had nine months to dwell on all the things that could go wrong. Uh, what's wrong, honey? It's time, Nick. We, we better get to the hospital. Okay, let, let's go then. What are you waiting for? I'm scared. I'm scared? What if something goes wrong? Well, nothing's going to go wrong. Babies are born every day and ours will be fine. Well, what about me? What if I die? You won't die, Sophie. You're just excited, all worked up. Oh, you should talk. You're the one putting your clothes on <laughs> over your pajamas. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm a little excited, but this is the first one after all. Uh, maybe the last one, too. Stop talking like that. You're being more... I can't help it, Nick. I'm really scared of dying. I have a terrible premonition. Nick says I trembled all the way to the hospital. By the time we arrived, I had passed on my distress to him. Fear is contagious, and I was a carrier. A carrier of deathly fear. Our baby was born without a hitch, but the dread in my heart remained and touched every phase of our lives like a blight. Honey, isn't she a beauty? <laughs> she couldn't be anything else with you as her father. No, she takes after you. I hope not. Sophie. Are you happy, Nick? Of course, who wouldn't be? We've got to be careful, though. Naturally. No, I don't mean average careful. I mean very careful. We've got to watch her every minute. Babies can die suddenly, and I don't want anything to happen to her. Nothing will. Nothing could happen to her. She's as healthy as they come. I know, but maybe we're too happy. Maybe God... Maybe God what? Maybe he doesn't want people to be this happy. When you love someone too much, he takes them away. That's just crazy, Sophie. Don't talk like that. Don't even think it. But it's true. I saw it happen. My little sister, my mother, my brother... Please, Sophie... Don't. You see what I mean? My fears touched everything in our lives, not just at home, either. All our friends knew that I was terrified of death. One night, a bunch of us planned a big evening out with good food, drinking, and dancing. So Nick and I hired a babysitter. Having a good time, honey? <laughs> I'm having a wonderful time, Nick. We should go out more often. I knew you'd be glad you came. 
Hey, look at Sad Sophie. She's relaxed and smiling for a change. Please don't ever call me Sad Sophie again. Oh, I won't. It does my heart good to see you like this, Soph. Come on, honey. Let's dance. I danced until I was tired, and then I went back to the table, ordered a drink, and watched the others. I sat there contentedly thinking that this is the way life ought to be all the time. And then suddenly all the old fears rushed into my head. All the old questions bombarded me. What if you died right now? What would happen to you? Where would you go? You are going to die, you know. What then? Do you know? What then? God, you're cruel. So cruel. I came in here to have a good time and you remind me of death. I came here to forget and you won't let me. I wrongly attributed to God that which had come from Satan, an angel of light, as thoughts of death so often taunted me. I sat staring at my untouched drink, asking myself the same old questions. Why me? Why was I the only one distressed about death? Others didn't worry, and they never talked about it. They had a good time, and the dark shadow never seemed to fall across their paths or their faces. They laughed easily, any time at all. They weren't afraid. (laughs) But did they sometimes laugh too much over something that really wasn't funny? Maybe other people were afraid, too. But they put on a front, laughing even when their hearts were as cold as mine at the thought of death. (laughs) My selfie. What are you doing sitting here like a bump on a log? Don't you like the music? No, I just got tired. Oh, it's okay to sit down and rest, but you don't have to die completely. Don't say that. I'm not dying. Well, you sure look like it. Snap out of it, girl, and finish your drink. I, I don't think I want it. Oh, for Pete's sake. Do you have to be a killjoy? We take you places for a good time, and then you spoil our fun by sitting around looking like a chief mourner at your own funeral. Stop it! Oh, I hope you don't start talking about gloomy things. I say, eat, drink, and be merry. Tomorrow we may die. <laughs> As I went home from the party, sad and a little ashamed of being a wet blanket, I didn't realize that that night marked the end of a phase of my life. A new one was about to begin. But I didn't suspect that things would change so abruptly. We'll hear about those changes very shortly. With God, all things are possible. Our new facility is proof that God's Word is true. It's a wonderful home for the homeless men, women, and children that we serve here at Pacific Garden Mission. Our new state-of-the-art facility can shelter more than 800 men, women, and children each night in our spacious dorms. We serve over 2,200 meals a day in a sun-filled dining room with a seating capacity of 672. An expanded medical and dental clinic helps us meet the physical needs of our clients And very importantly, the new facilities have enabled us to enlarge and improve our 12-month Bible program and career development programs. We praise God for this new building. And we thank you for your prayers during the transition and move. The doors never closed. And people without a home always had food and a place to sleep, even during the months we actually moved. We also want to thank you for your financial gifts sent to offset the cost of our new building. We'll be paying for this building for a long time, and we're grateful for any financial help that God leads you to share with us. Donations can be made on our website, unshackled.org, or mailed to our new location at 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. For more information, email us at unshackled at pgm.org. Please include your address. I couldn't sleep at all after coming home from the party, too upset. The next morning, still tired and disheartened, I turned on the radio to keep my mind from dwelling on the questions that haunted me. A religious program was on, something that didn't interest me, but I let it alone and moved away to clean another room. Later, I returned. Answer me this, honestly now. Wouldn't you like to go to heaven? Well, wouldn't you? 
<laughs> What's your answer? Oh, what kind of question is that? Everyone wants to go to heaven. How can you know for sure that you will? I began arguing with the radio preacher as if he could hear me talking to him. And for a minute or two, it seemed as if he could hear, because he seemed to answer my questions. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. What did he say? His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Name above all names. He gave his life for you on the cross so that you could spend eternity in heaven with him. No, God wouldn't accept someone like me in heaven. God is no respecter of persons. You can be saved. Yes, even you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Saved? Did you hear that? The word was saved, saved from God's holy judgment and condemnation of sin, because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means all of us, but God made a way for us. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That means there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Pray tell, how do I do that? Believe. Only believe, dear listener. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Each morning for three days in a row, I listened to that man, and some of his words flashed at me so clearly that I can still remember exactly how he said them. If you're sick, you need a doctor. If you're sinful, you need a savior. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now you know why God calls this the gospel, the good news. The cross was a divine transfer, your sin for his holiness. If this is true, it's the best good news in the world. Oh God, let it be true. Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Each morning I listened, and each morning I prayed, asking Jesus to come into my heart and save me. When the program ended on the third day, I walked across the yard to see my neighbor who was hanging laundry on the clothesline. Hi, Sophie. And Missy, I, I just have to talk to somebody. I guess you're it. Oh, that's funny. I've been thinking about you for three days, wanting to talk to you. You have? Sophie, don't be angry about my asking, but have you ever invited the Lord Jesus to come into your heart? <laughs> you're kidding. Oh, I said don't be angry. No, I, I'm not angry. Astonished is more like it. Why? Because I've been asking the Lord to do exactly that for the last three days. The same three days you've been wanting to talk to me about it. But why keep asking him to do it again and again? I want to be sure. You can be sure. The Bible promises, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When Jesus comes in, he closes the door behind him, and he says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Sophie, if you've sincerely repented of your sins and asked to be saved in faith, then you're born again. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Are you sure about that? I'll show you. It's all over the Bible, but especially in the third chapter of John and also in Revelation. Come on inside. See, Jesus said, 
Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And here, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. I heard it, and now I see it for myself. Somewhere in the Gospels, he said to his followers, Rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. This is all so amazing to think that you don't have to doubt and wonder if you'll get to heaven. It's a done deal when you receive Christ. I've always been afraid of dying because I didn't know what happens after death. He was resurrected, and we are too. Here's a good verse for you then. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Free of fear? That's wonderful. You don't know how happy I am for you, Sophie. I just hope that Nick will be happy for me, too. How was your day, honey? Amazing and wonderful. Mm, How so? Well, I've been listening to a radio preacher, and today I know for sure that I am saved. Uh That's nice. What what are you talking about? You've always gone to church and prayed to God. But I didn't know the Lord, Nick. I knew about him, but that's not enough. You have to be born again of God's Spirit. I hope you're not becoming some kind of religious nut. I don't think so. I just know that for the first time in my life... I'm not afraid of death. We had only been married a few years then. Only a few years since Nick had given up the church where his parents attended to marry me. So it wasn't easy at home for a while. I didn't want to go out and party with him anymore. I kept growing in faith while he was standing still. You want me to babysit tonight? Why? I want to go to a Bible study at church. Why can't you study the Bible at home? But I do, but I'm learning so much more when I study with them, Nick. I'm afraid to ask what. I always knew that Jesus died on the cross, but I didn't realize there was no other way to save us. God put our sins and his judgment on Jesus, and he died in our place. I'm not afraid to die now because I know that I'll go to heaven. I never doubted that because you're a good person. Oh, honey, no one is good enough. Only Jesus... And I've learned that our goodness can never really satisfy God's holy standard. That's why Jesus had to die for us. You know, Sophie, that's crazy. What's the incentive to be good then? When you are born again of God's Spirit, the desire to do good things becomes a part of you. Slicing it thin, don't you think? You can't earn your way to heaven. Jesus already earned it for us. Well, I'm glad you're not afraid of death. You know why? I have a reservation. A guaranteed place that Jesus paid for with his blood. You know what, Sophie? I think I liked you better before. What, when I was always afraid? Oh, Nick, how can you say that? You weren't always preaching at me. I'm sorry, honey. I don't mean to preach at you. I'm just so happy. And I want you to be saved, too. Why don't you come to church with me and see for yourself? Uh Uh-uh. No, thanks. I did that once for you. I'm not doing it again. I prayed so much for my husband, but he resisted every entreaty of mine. Then he had a serious accident, and I prayed that God would save him. He didn't die, but he didn't get saved either. He had a second accident, and his recovery was agonizing. Dear Lord, please don't let my husband die without coming to you for salvation. Speak to his heart, Father. Draw him to you. Bind the enemy that whispers doubt in his ears. Save him, Lord. Sophie, I'm so glad you're here. I've been here all the time, honey, praying for you. Thank you. The members of the church are praying for you, too. (laughs) Thank them for me. Nick, Jesus loves you. I know, Sophie. I can feel it through you. God wants to deal directly with your heart. I know you're hurting, but he's right here, and he wants to help you. All you have to do is ask him. I will. Nick had finally reached the end of himself with nowhere to turn, and he professed faith in Christ. 
Then my faith, my proclamations were tested. I was hospitalized for surgery, not expected to live. Once I would have been terrified of that prospect, but having Christ in my heart made all the difference. Lord, if my work here is finished, then I'm ready. Take me home. Hey, you doing okay, honey? Mm, Yeah, I'm okay. I was really worried about you. That I would die. I'm ready to go, honey. I, I know you are, but I'm not ready to lose you. Well, I guess God's not in a hurry to take me. <laughs> I hope not. I prayed for you. But you're not out of the woods yet, Sophie. Now, whatever he decides is okay with me. God did restore me to health, and he always has work for his people to do. I began going to hospitals to tell people about his wonderful promises. Sophie... I haven't seen you in a long time. I heard about your illness, and I came by to pray for you. Oh, how thoughtful. After all God has done for me, it's the least I can do. Share his love with others. Uh, I didn't know you were religious. I'm not, but I know Jesus now, and he's made a big difference in my life. Remember how scared I used to be about death? Oh, I'll say. Now here I am, the one facing it. God gave me peace about death when he saved me. Oh, I was so thoughtless, making fun of your fears. I'm sorry. You didn't know the truth, that Jesus makes us free. It's it's scary, Sophie. I'm not ready to die. (gasps) In John chapter 11, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Is that really true? Yes. I want to believe that. You can, because God said it and he can't lie. Repent of your sins now and ask the Lord to save you, and he will. I love the work God has given me to do. Going to hospitals where I tell them God's promises... As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. I tell them how Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 promise that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You can pray anytime, anywhere, asking God to save you. He looks on the heart. If you need help in making this life-changing decision, get in touch with Pacific Garden Mission, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. The telephone number in Chicago, 312-492-9410. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Visit our website at unshackled.org to learn more about this ministry. This is program number 3005, heard in the classic true story of a woman called Sophie, where Annabelle Armour, David Stewart, Allison Voller, Michael Wolner, and Oksana Fednishin. Director, Mickey O'Donnell. Original music, Ralph Colburn. Sound, Howard Hannock and Arthur Rids. Engineer, Kim Rasmussen. Script, Kenitha Gabler and Jack O'Dell. I'm Tom McElroy. Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. If you've never written to tell us you listen, why not now? The address, Pacific Garden Mission, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Disheartened? 
You may call Pacific Garden Mission in Chicago anytime and talk with someone who cares. 312-492-9410. Someone is waiting for your call. 312-492-9410.
And I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Unshackled, the Sophie story. We would appreciate it, and I know that Pacific Garden Mission would too, if you would drop them a line, send them an email, give them a call, whichever way you would choose to reach out and touch them. If you want to write to them, just simply address your envelope to Unshackled, 1458 South Canal, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. If you would like to email Pacific Garden Mission, it is unshackled at pgm.org. Or perhaps you would like to talk to them on a telephone. 312-492-9410. And take time to visit their website because it is jam-packed full of information, historical, present, and future, so you can enjoy yourself at unshackled.org. Unshackled.org. Remember, if you missed any episode, any episode whatsoever, any of them, you can go back and listen to them over and over again. You can download them. They are free of charge. If You can download one, some, or all of them, whatever the case might be. So take advantage of that. And then email us. George C.E., that's George C.E. at Comcast.net, and let us know, let us know that you listen to Unshackled here on the George Espinlob Show. I do want to say this in closing tonight, and then we're going to play a couple more songs and be on out of here. Tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, or perhaps just a little later, we will have the show on the road, and barring any storms, we will be at Tall Pines, Virginia tomorrow night. So tune in, and barring any storms, we'll try to get as much information up as we can and let you know exactly what time we're coming on. We're shooting for 6.30 p.m., Eastern Time, our regular time, 
But if something takes place or there is a severe storm, because once again tomorrow the temperatures are supposed to be up high in the 80s and into the 90s. So they tell us that we are prone to have more thunderstorms and all those things that go with the extreme heat. So barring any storms or circumstances beyond our control, we will be on the air tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time from Tall Pines, Virginia, on the road with the George Espenlob Show. We will be mobile. We don't even know what we're doing yet. Well, we have an idea. But we'll let you know. We'll let you know. So check out the Facebook page and the uh, radio show page and all the other places that we have it up, and you'll find out exactly what's going on. I want to thank you for tuning in tonight to another exciting episode of Unshackled. And I trust and pray that each and every one of you stays safe if you live in that 19-state area that's going to be affected or has been affected or is being affected by severe storms this evening. Stay safe. And for all of our friends down the street, keep your eyes on the sky. Around the corner, keep your eyes on the sky. Across this great nation, keep your eye on the sky. And when you see it get gray and dark, Please take cover. It's better to be safe than sorry. And to all of our friends around the world, thank you. Thank you so very much for tuning in tonight and listening to Unshackled. I trust that you'll stay safe. Please don't take no wooden nickels. Love one another. Be kind to one another. Until tomorrow night. This is George Espenlob saying one more time, God bless you real good, and I'll see you tomorrow night. Good night, everybody. All alone and broken hearted, trying to calm the raging battle. In my mind In search of many answers That my troubled soul Just couldn't seem to find I saw a flower blooming Where there was no rain Or sunshine And I knew not that this flower would change the rest of my life. I found the lily in my valley. In my valley. I found strength when I was warm. I, was warm. I found a place to leave my burden. I found refuge from the storm A place to trade my dark skies For beaming rays of sunshine I found a lily in my valley And he blooms all the time If you're down and broken hearted And you just can't seem to find peace of mind You're searching for your answers But your problems are getting worse all the time Just reach your hand to Jesus He'll take you in and break the ties of mine
He'll be the lily in your valley And you can watch him bloom all the time He'll be the lily in your valley Place to leave your burden. He'll be your refuge from the storm. A place to trade your dark skies for beaming rays of sunshine. He'll be your lily in your valley. And he'll bloom all the time I found the lily in my valley I found strength when I was warm I found a place to leave my burden He gave me refuge from the storm Found the lily in my valley, and he blooms all the time. I found the lily in my valley, and he blooms all the time. All. Yeah. 
something